Sportscasters and college football head coaches have more in common than you might think. For example, I don't ever get ready for an interview that I have two weeks from now or a week ahead of time. I prepare only for that day's interview. And so today my focus is on one man, James Franklin, James Franklin, James Franklin, James Franklin. Coach, welcome to the show. I think you know where I'm going there. Are you still baffled that years into that Twitter message that you continue to send out, that there remains confusion about why you are trying to explain that each successive game is the most important your team will play? Well, yeah, I, you know, I obviously uh, a lot of the fans, they only follow you the week that you're playing their team. So I, I get all that. But yeah, the approach has, has been pretty consistent. It's not going to change. I think it drives some people crazy. I think it confuses other people. Or they, I get messages, oh, we're in your head. That's why you tweeted our name 30 times. And no, that's, that's our approach week in and week out. But I, but I appreciate your approach as well. I think, it's, I think it's awesome. Well, I'm trying to. I mean, you're sitting in the chair today. We can't worry about who's sitting in the chair a week from now. Obviously, we're worried about the game on Saturday night because it is as big as it gets. The last two have been amazing from a fan perspective, I'm sure from a coach's perspective and a player perspective as well. How much was the 2016 win a program changer for you? And conversely, how much does the sting of 2017 remain? Well, I think you could even go back further than that. I mean, three out of the last four times we've played, the game has been decided by seven points or less. You know, my first year of the year, they won the national championship. We took them to do double overtime. So uh, it's been a great game. There's no doubt about it. I think they're, you know, they are supremely talented watching them on tape. Uh, we got a tremendous challenge. Uh, you know, I think, you know, we have some talent as well, and we got a home field advantage. And there's no reason to think this isn't going to be a great game as well, but we're going to have to play well. You know, there's no doubt about it, but uh, you know, we're excited. It's a special environment. Uh, this is uh, a week that I typically don't have to get people to, to, fo to focus on. They're already focused on it, but I do think the approach is good because it helps us kind of tune out some of the external noise, uh, and there's a lot of it. Also a lot of offense, top two scoring offenses in the country. When you look at your team, what has impressed you the most in regard to what you've done on the offensive side of the ball? O-line, 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 <laughs> O-line. I'm going to stick to my deal. Uh, yeah, I just, you know, when we got here, you know, I think we only had five scholarship offensive linemen. We moved two guys over from the D-line to get to seven, I think, was the number, something like that. Uh, so it was a challenge, and uh, we've kind of chipped away at it every single year to build that back up, and I think for the first time that we've been here, it's, it's a strength, you know, and I think you see that at the tight end position. I think you see that at the O-line um, in terms of how we're able to, to run block. we got a great back in Miles Sanders, but we're just more consistent right now, getting a hat on a hat, being physical, and that's in both the run and the pass game. This may be a bit of minutia, but I'm curious because you mentioned the offensive line. Do you practice during the week, snap count, cadence, changing it up when you're facing a team like Ohio State and when you watch their DNs and their amazing get-off and how quickly they're in the opposing backfield? No, you know, I, I think you have to be careful as a coach when you try to do something that you don't normally do. So we have different tempos. We have different cadences. We'll use all those cadences. I think on, on the offensive side of the ball, if, if cadence isn't, um, a weapon for you, then you're obviously helping the D-line. I think obviously, you know, crowd noise for our D-line is an advantage as well. Um, so, so we focus on, on all these things, but it's not like we're going to try to do something different um, this week based on what we've seen on film. I think when you try to create weekly identities, uh, that's where you struggle. And, you know, we have tendencies, we have things we do, we have them for a reason because uh, we're pretty good at them. You know, so, you know, those things will continue. James, how do you best describe Trace McSorley's effect on your team, especially the young guys? And obviously here, I don't just mean with his play on the field. I mean, confidence-wise, in the locker room, everything he means to the program. He, he's a standard setter. You know, he's a standard setter. Uh, he's a culture driver. He's the guy that, um, when I hear him talking to the team, um, he's, he's presenting facts and information in a way that I think um, you know, builds on what we talk about every single day as coaches. So, you know, he creates tremendous confidence in our offense that every time we have the ball, we got a chance to score. Um, he, he 
builds confidence in our defense that our defense knows if they can slow them down or hold them that our offense has a chance to score one more point than we give up. Uh, and then on special teams, they know if, if you know, we give our offense good field position, then you know, there's a strong percentage that Trace will get in that end zone. You know, he's, uh, he's great in terms of our quarterback room. Uh, we got tremendous relationships in our quarterback room and are starting to really create and develop depth there. And he's been really kind of the, uh, you know, the foundation for that. So in so many ways, how he treats people downtown, the type of student he is, he already graduated, just so many things that, that he's got going for him. You know, I, I love him a bit. I'm a big, you know, Trace McSorley fan as well as his, as well as his parents. I got home last night and uh, his sister was at our house babysitting our kids. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge McSorley family uh, fan. I'm curious as to what that babysitting rate is, but I'm going to keep that private for now. Uh, Coach. Yeah, it's the, it's the standard rate. All right, just making sure. You're not getting me in any trouble. Just making sure. Uh, Coach, you've coached with some great quarterbacks. You've coached against some great quarterbacks. You played the position. You know the position as well as anybody. What's the most impressive aspect of Ohio State quarterback Dwayne Haskins? I, I probably would say that the level of confidence that he's playing with right now at such an early point of his career. I know he's not a freshman, um, but he, he's, he's just – He's not playing like a first-time starter, and obviously it helps. He's playing behind a, a really good offensive line. He's got all types of talent to throw to, but you know, typically you can find guys that are accurate or you can find guys that have strong arms, but it's hard to find a guy that has the combination of both. He is accurate. He's got a strong arm. He seems to have really good vision and, and can find the open receiver. Feels very, he seems to feel very comf- comfortable in the pocket. And again, the O-line and the talent he's surrounded with helps with all of that. But, uh, you know, I, I, I don't, can't imagine you could find someone uh, that would be critical of, of really any part of his performance to this, day, to this point. When you're discussing the talent that's around Dwayne, what's more difficult to game plan against, a two-headed attack at running back or the fact that they have five, maybe even six guys that could be number one wide receivers on a lot of teams? Yes. Yes. <laughs> all, all, all of that. The O-line, the quarterback. Um, you, know, I, you know, I said the other day, and I probably didn't do a great job explaining to myself, you know, although they, they, they got you know, a new offensive coordinator and a new quarterback, I don't really feel like they've changed a whole lot in terms of what they do. When I say that, people look at me like I'm crazy because they were so quarterback run driven with JT and they're not that anymore. But I guess what I'm saying is I don't really view them as that they have changed. I view that they're playing to the strengths of their personnel. So JT is a guy that obviously that was a huge part of his package and what they did. That's not necessarily, you know, who Dwayne is. He's a thrower. He obviously can run. But he's going to distribute the balls to his playmakers. So they're just emphasizing different things right now. And obviously it makes a whole lot of sense based on you know, who they have. Last one, Coach, before we get you out of here. You mentioned the buildup and the environment that we're going to see on Saturday night. But you have to do so much work to get ready for this game. Do you and your staff get to actually walk around campus at all in a week like this, take it all in? And does a feeling like that, if you do get to enjoy it, does that ever get old for a coach? No, but, but I'd love to. You know, I, I say all the time, you know, I'd love to be, say we're playing in a huge away game, I'd love to be at one of the downtown bars watching the reaction after a score. I'd love to be able to do both. I'd love to tailgate. I've never tailgated in my life. Seems like an awesome experience. I'd love to be able to walk, walk college and beaver on a game day because I hear it is like just you know, bananas. I, I, and I've never had an opportunity to experience those things. So we're kind of in our little bit of a, a submarine getting prepared and getting ready. Um, but, you know, there is a buzz and there's a, you know, a buzz around campus and downtown and, you know, in the community. There's no doubt about it. But as coaches, we don't get to experience a whole lot of that. See, the interview comes full circle because I started talking about what sportscasters and head coaches have in common. There's another thing we have in common, so let's make a deal. When one of us actually gets the opportunity to do that on a game day, we'll do it together. Let's do it. That'd be awesome. And Done. I think that's going to happen for you before me, so you come see me because I'm not going anywhere. I agree with that statement as well. Coach, appreciate the time. Best of luck on Saturday night. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you.